Martin and welcome to Astronomy for Beginners and today I'm going to do a guide on setting up a, um, a SINSCAN AZ MAN. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is that I've had a few guys on, on the Astronomy for Beginners forum that are struggling, they've just, just bought the telescopes and they're trying to find out how to use a go-to system. Okay, now to be honest here, as I mentioned before, is for anyone who's taking part on it as a hobby, my best number one advice is always buy yourself a good pair of binoculars, cheap binoculars, and a good star map or planisphere. And the main key thing is you've got to have some kind of basic knowledge of got to know a few constellation patterns, get to recognise uh, a few bright stars in the sky. Now the reason why I stress that is that for a lot of beginners out there they go out and buy a really good telescope with a go-to mount and then expect it to run out of the box and run perfectly. Now the thing is with go-to mounts it's like a computer. It only works for you exactly perfectly if you tell it to do it. It's basically bench, you program it, you tell the computer what you do. You know what you're gonna what you're gonna do, basically. Tell it how to use it, you know, and then it will work for you. But the thing is, with this, you've got to know, have some kind of basic knowledge. Now I highly stress that. Get it outside, go and look for a pair of binoculars. Start to stargaze. Start finding the objects. Start learning to um, distinguish the constellation patterns using the planisphere or a star map. Highly stress that you get your eye, your heads round that. Okay, it's really important. And before you buy any go-to mount or telescope or whatever, okay, that's the key thing. Now, go-to mounts are really easy to use. All right, there's a lot of guys who don't, a lot of guys who suggest don't get a go-to mount. It's a lazy way of doing it. You know, find your objects. Yeah, maybe so. But there's a lot of guys like myself. I don't know exactly where all the objects are. I know a few constellations and a few bright stars and all that, and I know a few deep sky objects along the along the sky. But there's a lot of objects out there that are very hard to find, even if you had the star map and all that. So the good thing about the go-to is it's designed. Long as you put in the right sort of information into it and then you line it up with twos of maybe three, maybe one star alignment and put your date, time and all that. Once you put all those in correct, correctly and it's lined up, it will find stuff for you, easy as anything. You know, it's a lazy way of doing it, but the thing is I always find that if it can find things for you, you spend more time or more longer on the eyepiece looking at the object and enjoying the views. Okay? Again, a lot of beginners make a lot of uh, you know, mistakes by getting a telescope and expect it to work out straight out of the box. Okay. Another thing is, before you even do any of these uh, setups, you've got to do a, a dry run or practice. You've got to practice to use that kit. Even if it means reading through the manual three or four times, which are ultimately boring, but the things with the, uh, the manuals, they will help you out and this is the reason why I'm doing this guide and doing a live sort of setup so you guys can physically see what I'm doing and obviously I always find that a, a, a demonstration like this a lot of guys tend to get it because a lot of the manuals you see they are, they are pretty tedious and some don't actually explain it clear enough either so, so there's a lot of guys who are actually struggling in a way so this is the reason why I'm doing this guide to help you guys out Alright, can't stress it enough, but, um, but basically, I mean, and another thing as well, um, obviously you get the telescope set out of the box and then you expect to see wondrous uh, objects and all. Bear in mind, if you're in a, 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 you know, an area where you've got bad light pollution, okay, um, especially near, if you're near a city or something like that, or you're in a city, you may see some one or two objects and all that, but the thing is that you're not going to get the best views. You're not going to get the wow factor where the you know you see a diesel object you've seen like Andromeda Galaxy, for example. 
you're not going to see in massive round deals. So the thing is, if you've got a telescope, yeah, you can use it near in this in a city or where the light pollution is bad. But the best thing it can't be is dark skies. Go out somewhere in the countryside, somewhere remote, and set it up there. All right. It's no good just sitting on your garden and if, you've got, if your light pollution is terrible and all you can see is just the bright stars then you need to move the scope elsewhere into a dark location as possible. I know in the UK it's pretty bad with light pollution but there are areas around the UK that are you can travel all right, to get to these places and you start using the telescope. Believe me, a dark sky is better than a light polluted sky by far. I, and a lot of beginners make a mistake, expect it to see wild, you know, beautiful objects in the night sky, but if they're in bad light pollution, you can see no, no, all right? A lot of people might disagree. I mean, you can use light pollution filters, but again, yes, they deem the dark background and all that. And when you fit them on the eyepiece, you're not going to get the wild factor again. It's just going to show you the object. But it's not going to show you detail about that because yeah, light pollution only darkens the background so the objects stand out a bit more. But it's still not, not as good as a dark sky, right? A dark area where the, you can... I mean, a good example for a dark area is when if you're very fortunate and you're in the dark side and you can see the Milky Way where you've got the dust lanes along across the sky. Now that is a dark side. That's what I'm trying to tell you guys is if you've got a sky like that, you've got good sky conditions, right? So that's when you really need to start using a telescope. Obviously, for the guys who live in the city, it's very difficult. However, it's not a drama. You're just restricted to the bright objects. Basically, you are restricted to looking at the moon or and the planets. Okay, so you're not you're not diminished by the views as such. But if you're going to view Deep sky objects, I still suggest go somewhere in the countryside where it's dark. All right, I can't stress it enough, and that's what these sort of objects are about. Again, it's location, location, location. Right, basically, what we're going to do now is I'm going to set up the telescope as a step by step instruction, so I'm not going to lose people. All right, there may be a few items that you may need that will help you, okay. I will also cover certain parts of setting up the mount, which again, I'm not actually, um, you don't have to do it, but it is good practice, because the reason why it's good practice is if you did get serious and start taking up astronomy, and you really want a, a, a decent mount or a telescope, there are certain things that if you go through this practice, you'll know how to use it, or use the mount and get it set up right. So there are going to be some things you don't have to do, all right? But it is good practice, and you will learn from it, all right? Again, practice makes perfect. The more you set up the telescope, even if it's just going, um, you know, set up in your cellar, for example, where I'm here, okay? You set it up as normal because at the end of the day, once you practice, it's a set drill. You know, you set it up, and there, bang, well, you're up, you're ready, and you're observing, okay? Or imaging, if you go to that room. But the thing is, you know, you've got to set it up and you've got to get your head around certain things and aspects. So, what I'm going to do now, go at the back and I'm going to set up as I am, you know, on my, if I'm going to observe it, okay? So, I'm set on the telescope as I'm starting the observing session. Okay, first step is the, is the ATS um, Sin Scan mount tripod and the, the mount itself. Right, first step you've got to do position that uh, mount so that it's on level ground and it's pointing north okay um, the reason why I say that is I mean you don't have to set it to north on this mount but as good practice if you're doing if you bought an EQ mount you have to get it pointing north on level ground and pointing north one of the first uh, things you'll do now obviously I've got the legs extended out, alright, and basically what I'm going to do is get yourself one of these, which is a compass, alright, and what you want to do is you're going to line up um, the, the point, obviously the, the points are there on the compass are line up to point north, alright, and you're going to line it up against the mount. So, 
Here we are at the mount. Tip is on this mount, what I always find as a pointer, a good pointer, is I usually use the front leg as the marker is uh, pointed towards north. All right. So I use the front leg to indicate where north is. Yeah. And basically, what I do is do this. I level the, I move the tripod or mount, okay, and see where north is. It it's pointing north just about here, right? So basically, I just level it across like that, okay. Right, basically, I've moved the. You can either use the hand controller, right, to move the mount so it lines up against the leg. Okay, see the mount head there and the leg itself. Right now, that, as you can see, okay, there you go. There is the mount pointing north. Right, the next step is you want to get this tripod level on ground, yeah? Now, before you start adjusting legs, I always like to put the um, the tray, all right, the accessory tray. You don't have to put it, but I found that fitting the the tray helps to keep the the mount more sturdy. So I always put the tray in there. Right, as you can see here, from the bubble there, this is the spirit level bubble. This indicates to me that this, see the little bubble in the middle inside that reticle? That's telling me that's on level ground anyway, right? But if that bubble's out, out of that area, okay, from that little area there, then basically what you have to do is you adjust each of these legs so that it aligns up in that bubble inside that reticle. That will indicate that you're on level ground. Very crucial that you get your scope on level ground, particularly on this mount. Because if you don't get it on level ground, your basic, your go-to accuracy is not going to be great on this. So when you do line it up on the telescope, and the mount's not going to perform, and the go-to abilities will be affected. So you've got to make sure it's on level ground. Really important. Obviously, this is already set, so I don't need to. Okay, next step is start fitting your power cable and your handset controller. Okay, here's a handset. Basically, I need to just clip it into the port like so. Okay. And I just clip it in like so. Just be careful that you don't move them out. Okay. Clip it in, put it onto the guard like so. Then put your power point in there. In so there's your power pack. Now, so see, put the power pack into the power port here. Okay, the sync scan will automatically start up anyway. Okay, but um, the thing is, we're not going to uh, use the handset as yet. Okay, next step is we're basically going to mount the telescope tube onto the mount. Obviously, get me a good old uh, mighty uh, 127 Mac, alright, and then I basically slacken this um, dovetail locking bolt and I slide it onto the, onto the dovetail and then clamp it up like so. Okay. Check to see if it runs square, right? And then there it is. That's the telescope. Again, not move the the mount carefully. Now you can set the, the mount on level ground and pointing north with the telescope tube on there and all the other stuff. If you if you're not strong enough to lift the stuff, then do it as that. This is the reason why I do it like this. However, in the ideal conditions, if you do buy an expensive telescope, then you have to mount, set up the mount first, and then the telescope, and so forth. But obviously, it's good practice just to take everything off, and then set up the mount and all that. Right, next step is you either have one of these, which is a red dot finder, or you have one of these, which is a 
find the scope, okay? Now, regardless what they are, these are very particularly important because these need to be set up right. Now, before you even uh, contemplate in, in using them for observing, make sure that these finders, this finder scope or the red dot finder is accurately uh, aligned in a way that as you aim the telescope, when you move your telescope up and down, left and right, you're, you're going to use these as a sighting. Basically these, these are your sighting scopes. Okay, These are all ones you're going to need to uh, do your alignment or trying to find objects. Okay, If these are not aligned to the main telescope tube, you might as well you might as well give it up. All right. So the thing is, before you do an observing session, again, as I mentioned before, dry runs, get get in the habit of adjusting these periodically. Okay. I mean, once they're adjusted, they're set. But if you drop it or you you move it about and all that, then they're going to go out of alignment from time to time. So you know, now we've adjusted the. Um, the finder scope or the red dot finder are lined up with the tube. You basically now, usually you can either leave these on on the scope or take them off. If you aligned it, leave them on. And basically, you just clamp them onto the dovetail here, like so. Okay. Okay. At this point now, is you've got the finder scope connected up. The tr uh, the mount's on level ground and it's pointing north. The scene scan is on. Before you do any of your, before you do any alignment, right? A lot of beginners do the biggest mistake of trying to um, set up these alignment stars using the red dot finder, trying to lock it into the main tube, right? They do the the biggest mistake is using a high powered eyepiece or a or not very wide field eyepiece, right? Now. With this kit alone, with this uh, mount, it usually comes with a 10mm eyepiece and a, and a 25mm eyepiece, yeah? Okay. Um, biggest mistake is, um, if you're trying to align up uh, bright stars for your go-to alignment, do not use the 10mm the or lower uh, eyepiece range. Because what that do is, you, you, increase, the, you, you increase the magnification and you're reducing the, the, the field of view. So when you try to line the, the star up with the red dot finder or finder scope and it's in view with that but it's not in view with the main telescope then you're using the wrong type of eyepiece. So for, first off with always use the lowest possible power eyepiece like a 25 or a 32 uh, or a 40 or something in that region 25 to 40 mil eyepiece. I use the 25, gives you a wide field of view, right? and then basically this will give you a bright view of the, of the, uh, of the stars. So when you do line it up, right, you line it up with the, the widest field of view. Once your star is near enough in the middle, okay, in the middle of the, uh, eye, you know, in the field of view, all right, you can use a 10mm eyepiece and then basically focus the target and hopefully it should be near enough and then you can readjust the, the, the controls so the stars in line with the 10mm eyepiece. Alright, so always start off with the widest, lowest power eyepiece available before to line up the, the alignment stars and then go for a, a high power eyepiece with the lower number. Alright, so don't make the mistake using high power eyepieces. Otherwise, what you'll probably find that lining up the, these stars for, go, for your go-to setup is going, to be a bit, it's going to be more difficult for you. So don't make that mistake. But again, a lot of people do. Right, we got the handset, and um, when you switch it on, you get this information here that says Scene Scan AZ, and it tells you the firmware or what it is, the update. Okay, 
Um, base here, you just press enter here. Alright, again, it gives you a warning across the screen. Alright, it tells you do not use the telescope to look at the sun. It is a very important message. But it's on most telescopes anyway. Alright, on a lot of go tos, you'll get that. So you just skip that. Right, it'll then tell you um, the location. Now, this is very, very crucial. Before you do anything, alright, when you do your alignment and star alignment, you must put the right location. Okay, very crucial. If you don't get it right, you, your go to and your tracking is going to be abysmal. Alright, so the handset needs to know exactly where you are on Earth. Now what we'll do is, I'll show you how you get your location. Now most, you can either use an app on your mobile or iPhone or you can use uh, Google Maps to find your location you're at. But it needs to be the exact location. And the more accurate you are within that location, the better they go to, better the alignment will be. Very crucial. The big problem about the, the Synscan AZ mounts is that, I mean, I have, an a, I have a GPS unit that I attach to the Synscan EQ, EQ mounts. Now, the handsets are different on those ones, but the GPS works for them, but does not work, believe it or not, for this handset. I have no idea why. I mean, potentially it should work. But for some sort of reason, the handset does not allow me to update it. So I have to update it manually through these coordinates. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to show you how do you find your exact location you are on Earth and find your coordinates. So we'll go over there from there. Okay guys, I'm going to show you how to find your latitude and longitude, which you uh, coordinates which you're going to need to update your SIN scan. All right, this is a really quick way of doing it. Basically, click on the internet thing and type in this word latitude and longitude of a point, press enter, click on longitude and latitude of a point, and basically, it will give you a world map. Now, you can click everywhere in the world where you live. For me, I will just click on there. All right, you can zoom in or zoom out. All right, whatever way you want. Okay. If it's a bit too much, you can always move into there. And then basically, I'm going to zoom into my location of my observing site. Now moving to my observing site. Okay. Now you can select two things at once. All right. For me, this is the one. Basically, you can either select satellite, and it gives you a satellite image. And this is my location. Latitude fifty-one degrees. 51 uh, minutes and 55 uh, seconds. Now the seconds doesn't have to be accurate, but I always put it down anyway. And my longitude is 8 degrees, 52 uh, minutes and 6.6 .6 seconds. All right, you can round them off to about 7, and you can round that off yeah, to about 55. But basically that is the much quicker way of getting your longitude latitude of your location. I just entered these into my SIN scan and it will update that uh, handset. Now it would be a good idea to, if you stay in your same location, is to keep those values set. Okay, so if you do need to write it down on a piece of paper or something, you've got it to hand and you can just update it. Um, the longitude bit is really handy because if you, you need that value to when you use Polar Finder for the ones that have got the EQ mounts so that value there will be the exact setting you need 
to align with Polar Finder. So I hope this helps you. This is ultimately quick. Uh, a lot of guys go through all this rigmarole. You do not need to do any of that. Basically, all you have after is the settings there. They're already set, ready for you to work it out. Alright, hope this helps you guys. And uh, we'll move on. Okay. Right then, now you know your location. Alright, you basically type in key in the numbers alright you type in using these keypads and then you scroll across using these uh, using the buttons alright left and right to go to the next digit and so forth and put in your details there once you're happy with your details you press enter it, right this setting is set time zone now time zone is basically where you are on earth is the um, for example, right now, this is set for Germany, which is an hour ahead of GM, uh, GMT. Basically, um, for UK, all you need to do is make sure that it's um, if you set it to zero zero zero, yeah. All right, so you set it to zero zero zero, and in the corners. Basically, for me, I'm one hour, hence the reason plus one. Is I'm one hour ahead uh, the, the the time from UK. Okay, that's basically for your guys. It's just zero 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 zero. Okay. Now, if you in if you go elsewhere in a, another country and all that, the time zones might be different. So, I mean, usually you can find where you are, what time zone you're at. But I found that you can find this in your manual, in your SynScan AZ manual. It tells you which time zones you are on Earth. And you can set it from there. There's a big map, and it shows you the time zones, and you just key in those details. And then, guys, I'm just going to refer to the the instruction manual where this um, where your time zones located. Right, right. This is actually quite a really good manual, actually, and it shows you really good uh, um, information. But just just clarify, you guys. Right, at, right at the back page. This is where your um, where your time zone is, right? Basically, from west, east is depending. Well, obviously, west is going minus, and east is going uh, positive. And as you can see here, for your guys in the UK, if you're within this area here, go across this line, and you draw across this line all across, and as you can see, zero. That's where you press zero zero zero. Me, obviously, I live I live in Germany, so for me, I go across down here, and I live in uh, plus one, okay, plus one, and then I put in my time zone. So for those guys who are wondering uh, where this uh, map is, this is uh, right at the back page or right, of your SynScan manual, and you should find this map, and it tells you exactly where your time scale is. I hope this helps. Once you've keyed in the details, you press enter. Right, then it gives you uh, the set date and time. All right. Now this throwed me off balance when I first used the SynScan. All right. Now because the way it's set is uh, it create a lot of confusion for a lot of guys. Right. This digit here, these two digits here, the first two digits, that believe it or not, is not the day. All right, because this is set in um, as like a US format, believe it or not, these first two digits is the month. So you set it to the month. All right, now usually you can find if you try and key in the word uh, the numbers and they don't actually match up, because basically this is only set to one to twelve. All right, so basically this is the month you're at. So you key in the month. Then the middle two digits is the the day, believe it or not. So it's back to front. And also, the last four digits is the year. All right. Once you've updated all those key, press on the key numbers, and you're happy, you press that. Then it tells you to enter the time. Now, obviously, accurately, you need to get your time spot on. So, obviously, use um, like the internet or something or news and like, get the most up-to-date time you can get. All right. So, enter the time, and then once I mean you can set it. 
to uh, 24 hour or or 12 hour clock but I like to use 24 hours because it's accurate all right use the 24 hour system all right and just type in the details there and press enter then it'll say enter the time which it is and it's ticking away that's the time entered you press enter again right this screen is daylight savings now daylight savings is basically during the summer months I think I believe from the 20 I think it's 21st of March or something like that um, that's when the summer settings so you also put yes now round about October all right 21st of October is when it's winter time always press no for winter so daylight savings during summer periods yes and daylight saving for winter is no obviously it's still summer and period because it's it is um, September so we press yes and then I mean you scroll that up and down okay to find out yes no up and down out from there from these bottom keys here all right set it to yes and press enter then it goes into the big the busiest bit now this will be to begin uh, alignment yes or no now if you have already set your telescope before you don't have to do alignment well believe it or not but to honest with you, I always go through the process anyway regardless it only takes five minutes to do all right and then basically once you've uh, you just press yes to um, to bring in alignment and the, you can either press 1 or 2 but I always press uh, and press 1 that stops that will start the the alignment right basically it now goes on to another screen saying alignment now you've got several functions you can use now on the AZ um, mount is if you scroll down these scroll keys and you scroll down it will either say two star alignment or bright star right now depending on the firmware you can either do a one star alignment or a two star alignment and so forth alright but um, to your honest with you, I mean you, there is the brightest star is the alignment which basically you've got to align um, the brightest star in the sky alright and basically what you do is if you man, I don't really like this function because it's not as accurate I prefer to use the two star alignment because it gives you a much better go to capabilities but bright star is what you can you can use for visual and it, it's fine you press OK from that now this is the confusing bit now this is the reason why I don't like um, the, the region very well because it tells you um, northwest western sky southern west sky sky and you, you just keep scrolling there and it's confusing that's why I don't really like the brightest stars as such all right because if you don't get the right sort of sky right now this you can only prefer this to your manual to find out where you are on earth to get the right type of sky right that's why I don't like that function as well so I always go back a stage by pressing escape and get out of that obviously it exit alignment obviously I press no in fact no I'll skip that I'll skip you know press yes Right, and it goes back to alignment screen again. Brightest star. I mean, you can like way see what that does is the telescope will slow to the the, the brightest star in the sky, right? And basically, you, know, you can line up the, the 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 telescope with that. But I don't like it. So the best one is two star alignment without a doubt. All right, select that and press enter. Right, it says choose the first star on this first screen here. All right. Now this is the key, this is the thing what I keep mentioning to you guys, right, when you're first starting out, is you need to know these stars, right, and the only way you're going to need to know is you've got to study the sky, or alternatively, you can use Stellarium to find these stars, right. Now, the trouble about this um, Sinscan um, handset is to find these stars, it's not going to find them for you, all right. You got to slew the manually, slew the telescope using these keys up and down, left and right to line the star up into uh, the the finest scope to the the main scope. All right, 
and you got to know the solves. Now you can use Stellarium or alternatively, as I stressed it, is you use, get yourself one of these. This is a planisphere, all right? And basically, um, you want to um, line up the stars in the exact time location you're at, okay? And they give you an up-to-date screen of the night sky. And basically, you just scroll across, all right? I'm gonna scroll around about September, I'll say nine o'clock, eleven. Uh, say like it on the fifth. All right, on the fifth here. Okay, just if I remember that. Yeah, on the fifth, on the fifth there, nine o'clock. All right, this is the time now set. This is my area of that sky. All right, this one here. This is my sky. And basically, I need to start looking for bright stars. Now these alignment stars are the, usually the brightest ones in the sky, okay? These are the ones you need to use to line up. Alright? So basically, once once I'm trying to find a star, you know, I look at my planisphere, look at the sky, and if I recognize a constellation and a certain star, I will then go back to my handset. Now on my handset, it says, uh, gives you the first one. Don't always go off by the first cho chosen star, right? So obviously scroll down and go for the easiest ones, right? You've got Altairs, uh, Deneb, uh, Doobie, and so forth, right? I mean, I, I, you know, believe it or not, I don't know all the stars, right? Most stars that I know, probably Polaris, I mean, Alcade, I know Doobie, Deneb, Altar. Vega, right? I know some some stars, right? I don't know them all, right? But go for the stars that you recognise, then. But you need to know at least two stars in the right sky. So basically, if the stars is available in your planisphere, okay. So the first star I'm going to take, believe it or not, is think think simple, stupid, because that's the best policy. All right, I mean, I'm just scrolling through the, the, the amount of stars that I reckon recognize. All right, first one I'll go off by is Vega. Vega is in, situated in the constellation of Lyra, I mean. All right, and basically, to find that is, if you look here, all right, there's Lyra, constellation of Lyra, and it's two, four little... Uh, four little white, uh, like a little, like little rectangle, and the bright star Vega. You can't miss it. It's like a deep, it's like a deep blue, whitish star, and it, it's it's really, really bright in the sky. And Vega is, is is very high up as well. So I usually usually like to use Vega if it's up in that sky. All right. So don't quote that finding Vega all year round. Okay, it's not always there. Okay, so particularly in the winter months, Vega usually goes around and you won't see it again. But around about spring and summer, Vega can be visible. So basically, I know I'm happy I've located it through the planisphere and I'm going to use select Vega. So I entered there, it will then give me a slew of the scope to these coordinates here. Yeah? Right now, don't let this confuse you. Basically, what you've got to do is, basically, you've got to line, you've got to move um, these keypads up and down, left and right, and move the telescope. So basically, using your um, red dot finder or finder scope, which is properly aligned to the main tube, okay? And then what you're doing is you're going to use the red dot finder to find Vega in the in view center so that you want to get it in view with that telescope okay all right once it's in the field of view okay and you're happy and basically i'm going to do it now as a rough guide this is only a rough guide so I'm going to slow it up. Basically, just imagine I'm looking through my eyepiece. Um, I'm slowing the telescope up. All right. It's usually very high up anyway. Okay. And I just adjust the telescope all the way across. 
now go back to the answer. Right, we've now got the eye telescope lined up. It's in the eyepiece, centred. All right, and we go then back to the answer. Then after you press enter, it will ask, use the directional keys to centre Vega in the field of view with your eyepiece, okay? With your good eyepiece into view with that, all right? Now, if Vega is not in there, try and focus the image as well, because that's usually it shifts out of view, so you have to use the, uh, make sure it's all focused. Once focused, you then centre Vega using these keys here, left and right, up and down, all right? And once you're happy and it's in that eyepiece, you just press enter, right? That's the first part of alignment done. It will then ask you for another alignment of another star. So basically, again, don't always go off by the first function because it's not always, if it's not the right star and you can't find, all right, you just keep scrolling down. Now, the second star is also important because basically what the handset is asking is to accurately get this goal to alignment, it needs to know two stars at the sky so that it maps, um, does the map, a star map, into the computer so it knows exactly where all the other stuff are. So, obviously, pick a star that you recognise, right? Another one, another of my firm favourite is Doobie, which is one of the most dominant ones, okay? And to do that, I've selected Doobie. So, again, I go back to my planisphere and I will find Dubu. Right. Now again, as I mentioned before, not all planispheres are uh, have all the stars in the in, in in there, right? So try and get I mean this planisphere is alright but it's not um, it's not brilliant. Okay, so with this star map, because I can't find Doobie, if you recognise where Doobie is, then by all, by all means go for it. I mean, it's not always accurate, alright, so be careful that some plants here are not always covered. Now, here's Doobie here, here's, here's the plough, alright, here it is, there's the plough, and there's Doobie there. That's where Doobie is there, and it even tells you there where it is, alright. And then basically, you go to there, once you found Doobie, Okay, in the sky, we're using the planisphere, you press enter. Now what it does then, is the scene scan will automatically slew itself. Because it knows one star, it's going to slew to the next star. So basically, it will move towards uh, Doobie, to the second alignment star. Again, remember that all these alignment stars on the database are usually the brightest ones in the night sky. So we'll now wait for the telescope to slew across. Okay, it's now tracking and it's moving very slowly. The handset now beeps. Basically, what you do again, do the same process what you did with Vega, you use the directional keys, line up, uh, use the, the finder scope or or red dot finder into the field of view once you've located uh, Doobie and you've checked it with your planisphere see if it's correct all right you then line it up so it's in view with the eyepiece okay center it into the eye into the field of view of the eyepiece press enter then it'll say alignment successful that's basically now your go to set all right it's that simple now that's what I mean about making sure you know the sky. All right, you need to know the bright stars, and you also need to know the constellations, and all that, or some constellations to give you a good heads up. That's why I can't stress it enough. If the best policy is get yourself one of these at least a planisphere, or use Stellarium, which is another great uh, planetarium program. Okay, once happy, you press enter. All right. Now, for some strange reason, depending on some firmware, it goes into an option. But for some strange reason, it on, on this one, it doesn't go through. So I always press escape. Right, I press escape, so it goes choose menu, set up mode. You then press the scroll down buttons here. Uh, utility function, guided tour. Now the guide right. Basically now, um, you can do several things. All right, with this handset, you can either go to object catalog where you can manually if you press enter there it goes through name star go to scroll down button it says solar system 
uh, NGC catalog, IC catalog, uh, Miser catalogs, all right, and um, or Messier catalogs, Cadwell catalogs. All right, gives you a series of catalogs where you can find um, deep sky objects, planets, and all these interesting objects. Now, the Hansard believes around about a 42,000 date base. Now, on some telescopes, now this telescope can only see uh, a certain variety, all right, because of the limited aperture. Now, believe it or not, you can see a lot over this telescope, but bear in mind that you're not going to see, guaranteed to see, all these uh, Cadwell objects or these NGC uh, catalogs, the new general catalog uh, objects because they're usually the faint ones. Now for a beginner they always tend to go for the big mistake and go for those objects for some weird reason. Uh, for me, I always start off with the easiest ones which is the Miser catalog, which is the Miser objects. They're the best, or the Messier objects. They're the ones to go for because they're the ones that are visible with most small telescopes anyway in, in, in bad um, light pollution and all that. So go for the Messier objects, alright? Depending on the size of the telescope you own or something or you use, right, you're not going to guarantee that you're going to see all these objects. All right? These objects are very dim and it also depends on what, which part of the sky or you're at or which location you're at, if you've got bad light pollution or so. You're not going to guarantee you see them all the time. So, obviously for me, I always go for messier objects. Okay, so then this, I scroll down and I, and I, and I pick um, messier catalog. They'll ask you, uh, once I've entered, it'll then say what uh, messier object you want to view. Now, the trouble is about this function is for beginners, you do not know because if you haven't got a, um, uh, a book or something where all these objects are, you won't know what number it is, alright? So, you can do a random guess, but usually it might not be there in the sky. Uh, but for me, for beginners, I will escape from that and go straight on, press escape, right, keep scrolling down, right, scroll up, right, go off by this, right, go for the guided tour, as first time users, and you don't know the score, go off by guided tour, because they usually show you the best objects in the night sky, at the, that certain given time, and it gives you a guided tour, and basically what that does is you press enter, and now it gives you a series of objects. You can see Andromeda Galaxy, use the scroll down buttons, Lagoon Nebula, Pinwheel Galaxy, Double Cluster, M39, Open Cluster, um, Swan Nebula, M34, a few a star, Eagle. Gives you quite a lot of decent uh, deep sky objects that you can view at that certain sky, right? Alright? Now, bear in mind that. Depending on when you are, you're not going to see them, all of them, all right, and they might not even appear in the eyepiece, all right. Depends, but a good little guy, a good little start off is for beginners is go for Andromeda Galaxy. It's the closest galaxy to us uh, from from Earth, all right, and um, basically start off with some simple objects that it will give you the wow factor, and basically you just press enter. It will then give you a coordinates where it's at. Now you don't need to worry about that. All right, I don't want to confuse people in this, but it basically gives you the hours, uh, obviously where it's at, the hours, minutes, and seconds, and then it tells you the degrees, it, it, obviously degrees and and obviously uh, inches and all that. But uh, the thing is, I don't want to confuse you with that, right? You don't need to borrow that. But it, basically, it's a set where that object is. It's a set. It's like a map in the sky. All right, and this, that's where the coordinates of, of that location you can find. But don't need to worry about that. All you do is just press enter. All right, and it then says, do you want to view the object? You press enter again. Basically, now what's going to do now, the telescope will now slew into view. All right, it will now slew towards that target. Now, bear in mind, the key thing is that your alignment is very essential. Now, if you get your alignment spot on accurate within the eyepiece, all right, you're more likely to find your address. Now, but this, this particular mount, it's really quite accurate and it's quite good actually. And it will find you some of the objects quite well. But again, not always guaranteed to be in view with the, um, the telescope because 
if you're using a high power lower piece, or if your alignment's slightly out, that object might not be there. Alright, so basically use a wide file eyepiece, alright, to begin with. Alright, use a good wide file eyepiece like this one. Alright. Once you put it in there and it's focused, alright, the handset will then beep at you, okay, M31, it tells you the location where it's at. And hopefully it should be in alignment. Now if the object is slightly out, okay, and it's not sensitive into the, uh, the field of view because your star line is not quite right. There is one way you can make your go to a bit better, make it a bit more accurate. All right, is basically is if you hold, so if it's not quite center, you basically hold the uh, um, the escape key. Okay, hold it down. Now, if it doesn't work, because on the manual it does says hold down the escape key for two seconds. Now some handsets are different than others. Now on this one I have to double press. So I hold it for two seconds and I, and I double press again. Alright, and then it says, gives me an option, recenter object M31. And basically I just use my keys, my directional keys. Now because you want the object to be in center in the field of view of your eyepiece, you want to set the rate. Now set the rate, so press rate okay and then that will give you the set speed right so press 1 to 9 9 being the fastest or in fact 0 is the fastest right 9 all right and to 1 okay but I usually set mine uh, if you tr if it's slightly out I always use best use rate 4 so you select rate 4 okay and then I just recenter the object using my directional keys and basically I, I just move them across like so once I'm happy it's in the field of view and then, once it's in the center, press enter, and then that, that object is now center in your eyepiece. Now, the reason why you do that is what that does is it makes your go to just that little bit better, okay? It makes it a bit more accurate, all right? And that's basically, that's it. Basically, once your, your object's lined up and you're observing, that is you set. And you can join the night sky with the handset using the guide tour function, all right? And there you go. It's as simple as that. That's how easy go tos are. But the key thing is, all right, you've got to know the deep, you know, the brightest stars in the sky for it to work. Know the location you're at, the time you're at, and so forth. Because, like, well, with most things, particularly like sat navs, if you've got a sat nav for your car, if you don't put in the right sort of information, it's not going to work for you. So it's crucial that you get it right. All right. So basically, now, I mean, I'm happy. I've finished viewing uh, Andromeda. I, I say I want to, I want to go to the next one. I press Enter and I scroll down. All right. Oh, I, I might just go. Let's see. One of, one of my favourites, you know, I'm going to just go scroll down and I'm not going to, like Dumbbell Nebula, another third favourite of mine, love it. It's a big planetary nebula, very bright in the sky, very high up, alright, and I just press enter. I'm going to view that, tells the location, where it's at, press enter again. So I'm going to view the object. So basically now, telescope, and now go to um, M27, Dumbbell Nebula. It's that easy. Again, set it up right. It works perfectly all the time. So we're now slowing on there. So the telescope is now uh, it's starting to stop moving. It beeps. It's found it. Okay, we're back. Now, if you want to get some more further information. Uh, Right, so if you want to get more information, see how you don't know that object. The good thing about the answer, it can tell you uh, some information. All right, what you're what you're looking at, and the way to do it is if you scroll down, it'll tell you a series of information. Basically, tells you the coordinates. So you scroll scroll up or down, it tells you what constellation it's at. So it even teaches you where it is, and it's in, it's in that constellation there. All right, it tells you the size, what sort of size it is, it's a big one. When's it uh, set in, in the sky? Transit, what's the best time to see it in the sky? It even tells you when it rises from the sky. 
and it also the more important thing is the magnitude now magnitude is 7.4 which is quite dim all right considering the magnitude for the for the normal eyesight is 6 but 7.4 is quite dim but again uh, magnitude is is very important because that's the brightness of the object but obviously the higher that number 7.4 is higher than that the dimmer it is the lower the number the brighter it is so obviously um, get your heads around uh, magnitude and we're back to coordinates so it does tell you bits of information what it is now some handsets will also give you uh, information what it is as well further information but also with the skin, skin scan EZ, it doesn't, it just has a certain amount of information. But that just depends on what handset you buy for what particular go to telescopes. Now, again, this is just for purely for the skin scan EZ uh, go to mount. Alright, not all go to mounts work the same way. Alright, but this gives you a basic in depth of how a go to uh, telescope works. Okay, after you finish uh, viewing the object and you say you want to pack up and all that, all right. Once you finish and you want to go back, you know, pack everything up and then go back to bed or something like that, you had enough. Basically, getting a good idea before you start packing the telescope away and the equipment. A uh, good idea is to always uh, set the the sin scan, all right, to close down properly. So basically, to do this. You go through, um, go through, choose the menu, all right, and then it says select, uh, select mode. You scroll down or up and down and go to the bit where it says utility function. You press enter from there, all right. It'll show you the position. Keep scrolling down, all right, until it says park scope. Very crucial. Basically, what you're doing there, you're telling the uh, the this hit sign scan to close down the telescope. So what it does. As you press enter and you'll say part two home position. Home position is where that telescope is what you positioned initially before you know during the setup. So you press enter and then basically what the telescope's gonna do is it's going to slew back round, okay? It's gonna slew back round into the exact normal position. The reason why we're doing this is that it properly shuts down the the handset properly and I'm a big firm believer is you're basically shutting down the, uh, as if you're shutting down your computer and that's it as simple as that it just once it's beat turn off power and that's you done obviously there's no switch on there so I basically pull out the plug and there you go that is the handset and the go to mount properly closed and it's as simple as that so there you go now, if there's any questions you want to ask us, all right, feel free to ask us on uh, um, Astronomy for Beginners forum, all right, regarding this. Now, I hope this guide has helped you a great deal, all right, for you first-time uh, users who have not used a go-to telescope and never stargaze. I hope this has helped you uh, a long way, okay? But feel free to ask us any questions and post some great images as well because uh, lately we have been getting some really fantastic images at the moment from a lot of people we're getting a lot of good comments about uh, certain things on the images and it's great but again can't stress it enough get those images posted in we'd love to sh you know share your, um, your your fantastic images it really is appreciated on our forum because in the day that's what gives us uh, the interest all right, keeps going. We all love to share. But uh, yeah, like I say, feel free to post those in, uh, images, comments, or any information regarding any of this equipment or uh, telescope advice and all that. And uh, thanks again for watching this guide, and uh, I hope you have clear skies. Goodbye.